Hey everyone, Chef Jason, live and direct, right here at the Excellent Stores Masterclass Series. What am I doing today? I'm going to show you how to prepare a beautiful breakfast for mom on Mother's Day. What do we have on the menu? I'm going to be showing you a healthy alternative to fried eggplant. Today, I'm going to show you how to make eggplant chips using our air fryer. Very simple, a delicious treat and yummy. Mom is going to love it. We are going to go secondly into our omelette. Some vegetable omelette with some cheese inside here. Yes, I'm going to be schooling you guys how to make that omelette today. Some toast on the side. And lastly, a fruit bowl, a fresh fruit bowl. So let's do this. Join me. So eggplant, aubergine, bygan, whatever you call it. We know it as eggplant internationally. So check these out. I have some eggplant chips. I just cut them into three inch long pieces, quarter inch thick. So they just look like french fries. Very simple to do. Once I do that, I'm gonna show you how to bread these. So let's start with the breading. I have corn flour inside here. Now, people usually bread with flour sometimes, but corn flour gives you a really crisp exterior. And it, I think it's a beautiful item to use, especially in Asian cuisine and when even frying vegetables or chicken. We also have eggs inside here, two whole eggs, as well as breadcrumbs. So here's how this is going to be going. First, to our two eggs, I'm going to add a little bit of water inside here. I'm going to be making an egg wash. You can use milk if you want. A lot of people are trying to stay away from milk if you're lactose intolerant, so water is a great alternative. So I'm going to start to whisk that up like that. Breaking against the whites and the yolks of the eggs so it becomes homogenous. Now, to season that up, I have the new Twigs seasoning, dried pimento seasoning. This is amazing. It's concentrated flavor, it's intense, it's robust. So I'm going to add some inside of there to bring in that floral aspect as well as some zestiness. Now, these are just simply dried pimentos. You can use fresh also, but I think this is wonderful. A touch of black pepper also goes inside there. Of course, we need to bring in a little bit of flavor. And this is just some of the comprehensive spices I've used. A little bit of salt also. I'm using pink Himalayan salt today because it's definitely much healthier. As I do that now, I'm going to go again and continue mixing it up. Beautiful. So now that we have that out, let's start with our breading. We have our eggplant chips. I'm going to then put it into my corn flour like that. And let me just favor it for you guys. As I put it in like that, I'm just breading it, getting it lightly coated, as you all could see. Let me hold that up for you. You can see that eggplant usually tends to be a bit slimy sometimes. By breading it in corn flour, you create a nice rough surface to allow the egg wash and the breadcrumbs to adhere to. So let me show it to you. We're going inside here now, into our egg wash. And what I do is, I basically just turn it around like that. That's what we're looking at. That's what you're going for. As you can see, that beautiful dried pimento seasoning is all over it. We know it's going to be flavor. Then I drop it into my breadcrumbs. To the breadcrumbs now, I'm just going to toss it around like that. Now you can do this with mushrooms. You can do this with carrots. It's brilliant with cauliflower, even broccoli. Something local about eggplant, I think it's just simply brilliant. And that's what you're going for. Beautifully breaded eggplant fries. So I'm going to bang out a few of these now, and I'm then going to put them into my air fryer. You see, by adding the corn flour and breading it to the eggplant chips, what's happening is that it allows that beautiful egg wash to stick to it. Had we not added that, it would have just slid off straight off the fries. And then obviously, take it now, put it into the breadcrumbs. That eggplant is obviously going to adhere to the crumbs because of the egg wash, because it's sticky. As you can see, that's what's taking place right now. So we get beautifully breaded eggplant chips. All right, so these are our beautiful eggplant chips. As you can see, they're beautifully breaded, and we want to put them into our air fryer now for 25 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have that already baking up in our air fryer. It's time to do our vegetable and cheese omelet. Let's get started. First, what I would like to do is crack my eggs into my bowl. So. Crack my eggs against the flat surface and then replace that inside there. Again. Beautiful. Again, what I'm going to do is just add a touch of water just to break down the viscosity of the eggs. Just a touch. We are going in with some salt inside there to season it up. And some black pepper. 
to that, I'm using Twix Spanish Time Seasoning. This is a dried form, very intense, so a little bit goes a long way. I think it's perfect in my vegetable and cheese omelette. And I continue to whisk. When whisking, allow the yolks and the whites to become homogenous. So everything comes together. And whip here, that is by moving the yolks and the whites together to allow incorporation of air into the eggs. It becomes fluffy. Beautiful. So I have that to the side. I have my pot on the stove. This is my cook prep heat pot from Epsilon Stores. It's an eight inch saute pan. To that, I'm gonna get it ready. A touch of butter inside here. Also a little bit of oil. Why I'm adding both of them is that I get the flavor from the butter as well as the high burning temperature of the oil coming through. What I want to do is swirl it around in my pan like that. Now, usually when making omelets, the filling, whether it be celery, sweet peppers, tomatoes, they tend to be raw. I personally do not like that in my eggs. I like to add flavor to the ingredients that I'm filling my omelets with, with a little bit of extra pizzazz. And that is why I am going to take my ingredients and saute them before. So my omelette is going to have action-packed flavor inside of it. And we're going to start with some onions in there. Just a touch. So those are fine diced onions, a little bit of sweet peppers, green that is. I like celery, it's very fruity, you get a nice burst of flavor inside there. And of course, a touch of tomatoes. Color is very important, especially on Mother's Day. You want your mom to smile. So the ingredients that you use and the color that you use in your food is obviously going to make a day brilliant. I have this on low heat. I'm not trying to overcook the vegetables. I'm just trying to just break down the integrity a little bit so that when I stuff it into the egg, they're a bit more mild and they don't burst the egg skin. Seasoning is very important. Here we go. A touch of black pepper, a little bit of salt. Of course, the flavorings need to shine in the egg. Spanish thyme from Twigs. And I'm gonna bring the temperature up now to medium. Allow this to cook for about two minutes. What I'm going to do is transfer it into my little white London bowl from Excellent Stores. And these make excellent prep bowls, especially you know on a Sunday when you're cutting up all your seasonings for mom, or you're making macaroni pie, or even these eggs, or anything that you're making for her. These bowls are amazing. So we put that there, and we have that there to the side. Now, I want to introduce you to my next pot. This is my eight inch non-stick skillet from the new line from Excellent Stores. This is brilliant for cooking meats, fish, but even amazing for omelets. So we're gonna get it hot. To that, the same principle. Always add a touch of butter inside there. Butter again for flavor. And then we go in with our oil. When using a new pot sometimes, it's very important that you condition the pot. Now, you're saying, Chef Jason, this is a non-stick pan. To maintain the non-stick coating on any pan, there's some lubrication of oil or fat that is needed to condition it to extend the lifespan of any pot. Whether it be skillets, iron skillets that is, from the Lodge line, which Excellent Stores also carries, but also these non-stick pans, as well as the cook, prep and eat pans that we did earlier on. Always treat them with respect and they will reward you with a lifetime of service. I'm extending my heat now to medium. As you can see, my butter is starting to sizzle. Butter is something that burns very quickly and that's a problem when cooking eggs. If the butter burns, the fat solids in the butter obviously would brown the egg and we get a bun egg. What Trinis will say, a bun egg. We don't want that for mom on Mother's Day. We want something pure, we want something beautiful, we want something delectable. Now to that, now what we're gonna be doing is, remember our eggs that we whisked up earlier on? I'm gonna take them and I'm going to gingerly place them into my pot. And as you can see, I'm bringing it around to allow the egg to coat the surface area of the pot. An omelet is like a fine envelope, a nice fluffy one that envelopes a lot of flavor ingredients inside here. So you want to make sure that you build that outer skin 
very well. Now check this out, this is so important when making eggs. You're gonna start to see a bubble in the center here. Burst that. Immediately, move the pan into a 360 degree angle and allow the middle of the egg, that runny part of the egg, to build the outer skin or outer layer so that when we allow it to fold later on, the egg has integrity, it has strength to hold whatever ingredients that we put inside here. As you can see what's going on, right guys? I'm swirling it around like that, building that beautiful layer. I'm taking my rubber spatula and I'm going around the edges to ensure that it does not stick. Yes, it's a non-stick pan, but at the same time, we want to ensure that we have flawless edges. Do you see this little bit of yolk here? What I'm going to do now is just allow that to come to the center, shrivel it up like that, and allow it to cook. At this point, I take my vegetables and I start to lay it in there. It's on the one third of my pan, just like that. I also have some beautiful cheese, bringing it down to medium heat now, and I'm going to put it in the center. You all see that, right? Beautiful stuff. It smells so good. Just a touch of more salt on top. And this is where some magic starts to happen. So follow me. As we have that down, I'm going to start to roll and fold my egg. Just a flick of the wrist, allowing my left hand to push while I pull back with my right hand to allow it to envelope those ingredients. Bring it back again like that, and then I go for the last. It's forming up a little bit there. There we go, beautiful, last fold. As you can see, my egg is not burnt. Has that nice little white color on the outside with a slight little brown mark, which means that it is browning ever so slightly. As I take my heat off, my pot is still hot. Even though it's not cooking on the fire per se, it's still cooking in the pot because the pot has residual heat inside there. I leave it there and allow that cheese to start to become ooey, gooey and melted inside. While that is there, let me get my toast and my plate ready. So every single day mom gets up and she makes breakfast for the family. For the kids, sometimes they put it in the lunch box, or so if they're going on picnics, sometimes they would make for even dad also before he goes to work. One day in the week, Mother's Day, we have to treat our moms very special. And today is that day. Dad, it's time to sit down with the kids and make something really fruity, delicious, and colorful. And obviously, a fruit bowl goes very well for mom on breakfast. So let's talk about some of the fruits we have here. Use pretty much whatever you have. We have Pineapples, which are easily sourced from your vendor. We have melon, you see it all over selling in the supermarkets. Whatever is seasonal, we also have Pomerax. Pomerax are in season right now, as mentioned, use what you have. If you have mangoes in season, use it at that point in time. We also have some beautiful grapes. I've, what I've done is I've cut them in half. So they're not just circular, but also they have a new dimension and shape to them. You could use red grapes, purple grapes, green grapes, Seedless grapes work very well also because obviously mom is not going to be chewing and spitting out on the seeds and we want to make this day all about her. Apples are always glorious whether you use Granny Smith apples or Red Gala apples. I'm using the red today. So I have that and of course bananas. Bananas are very important. A high form of potassium and iron for mom. Of course our mom loves us. We have to make sure that she's healthy. I can't reinforce that how many times during the course of this video. So let's put together a little fruit bowl. It's not intimidating at all. I'm using my new H2K collection bowl from Excellent Stores. And we're gonna start with this. Color is so important when building a salad. So I have cubes of watermelon inside here. I'm gonna put that in there. 
Now, don't worry about the seeds too much with these melons. Obviously, you can't remove them all. Where you can, you can, but nevertheless, we have that inside there. And that's part of the experience of eating watermelon. So we have the red down. Let's look for something that obviously will counteract that color. So we're going with pineapples now. These little cubes of pineapple, these are intensely sweet. The eyes are removed as well as the core. Now with pineapples, they're a beautiful yellow color. And the beauty about pineapples is that they counteract very well with melon in terms of its sweetness. Works really well inside there. Okay, so what we have next, um, I'm seeing red, yellow. Let's go with something a bit creamish. So I have my banana. So I cut off the edges and I'm just gonna peel it off just like that. Shapes are very important when making a fruit salad. My mom is gonna appreciate that. So it's not just about cutting it in circles just like that. Get fancy a little bit. So let's go on the bias. Bias means to cut at a slant. So you're just basically cutting the bananas on a slant and you get these shapes, if you get where I'm coming from. Adds a little more variety to the bowl. And you know, it's more visually arresting. So we're gonna put it inside here. And this is what you call accenting the bowl. All right. So I'm just gonna leave some pieces back here. So this is what we have thus far. Let's go in with something green now. So we have some grapes inside here. And we just sprinkle them around just like that. And as mentioned, Pomerac is brilliant. So I'm just gonna star stud a few pieces inside here. And this is my local fruit right now. This is in season, I got this from my backyard. And you could see it has this nice pink color to it. I'm gonna push this to the side. Let's talk about apple. I leave the skin on my apple on because it's got roughage for mom also. At the same time also, it's color. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it in half like that. Turn it over like that. I'm gonna cut through the flesh side so you don't cut through the skin. A little easier, you get cleaner cuts. So we have that going on. Next piece again. Now a tip when peeling apples is that if you're gonna be having them stored overnight, just rub a little bit of lime juice on top of it so it does not oxidize and become brown. So we go with the inside there just like that. And position, don't be afraid to get inside there. Make it look beautiful. This is what plate presentation is all about. Put it inside here, bring it around. Now we come back with a little more grapes on top. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And then we come back in with our bananas. Now these bananas, you wanna just make sure that they stand up. Something about height is visually arresting in any dish. And that is something that chefs use a lot to create a little bit of drama on their plate. Here we go, last bit of apple. And that's it right there. Yeah, just some pomerac inside that we could just start stud it. That's good enough, let me wipe my hands. Now, the last thing I would like to use inside here this is my beautiful granola, available at excellent stores. And what I want to do is just add a little bit of crunch to my fruit bowl. This is also very healthy. Again, the theme is healthy. Just sprinkle it in on just like that. This has beautiful oats inside there that are toasted. And of course, granola grains. Now, this is beautiful just like that to eat. If you want to up the ante on this and make it even more special, you could easily just put a dollop of yogurt on top of it, maybe strawberry yogurt, and you're in heaven. Mom would love this. Speaking about that, let's get all of this plated up and get it on our tray for mom. You know, it's moments like these that remind me when, before I was a chef as a little boy, how I used to make Mother's Day breakfast for my mom. Now that I'm a chef now, I feel accomplished that I could easily execute this. I mean, you also how simple this was. Dads get your kids involved. You know, we love mom and obviously we need to treat her special on Mother's Day. We started off with my eggplant chips that we did in the air fryer that appliances available at excellent stores. It's a healthy alternative and obviously works very well for a healthy lifestyle for mom. We want mom around for a very long time. I pair that with my cilantro and lime dip from Caribel. Nice pungency inside there. It's a beautiful appetizer to get her satiating appetite propelling on Mother's Day. With that appetizer, moving on to our main course here, my vegetable and cheese omelette. Very important points on how we cooked the egg to ensure that we don't burn the outer part of the egg. The use of the butter and the oil inside there and the cooking of the ingredients to add that additional flavor. And we pair that with that brilliant sourdough whole wheat cocoa bread from Pesh Patisserie. A healthy alternative again, I'm stressing all the time that we need to keep mom healthy. And my theme breakfast is all revolving around that. 
A brilliant idea here, obviously, an omelette, and of course you could use different meats inside it. If mom is into pepperoni, meat, chicken, sausages, be imaginative. And we tidy out with something sweet. Of course, dessert is always a must. A fruit bowl is a healthy alternative. Using our seasonal fruits inside there, we used pomerac inside there, watermelon, we have grapes, banana, as well as some pineapple. And we drizzled a little bit of granola on top there, just a bit of crunch to get our texture going on inside there. We mentioned a little bit of yogurt, makes a bit of a difference, by all means. A beautiful cup of orange juice in a champagne glass is a classy statement for mom, obviously will make her smile. A rose in a balloon. Dad, get everybody involved. Let's make today special. And that's what this masterclass series is all about with Chef Jason. Thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping to see you guys again in the near future in the next segment. And of course, happy Mother's Day. From myself, Excellent Stores, and Chef Jason. Thank you.